Hi ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today. Folks, today we have a 2009 Nissan Altima, and we are going to replace a electronic throttle body assembly. So stay tuned, friends, and we'll show you how we get this done and get it calibrated. Okay, guys, step one, we're going to take our 10 millimeter wrench here, and we are going to loosen our negative side of our battery terminal and disconnect that before we get started. Next, we're gonna take a five millimeter Allen and remove this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt, and that will take our cover off. So let me get this taken off right quick, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is pull this air intake tube here out of the way, and we're just gonna use a straight blade screwdriver and loosen this hose clamp right here, and we're gonna loosen this hose clamp right here, and then we're gonna remove this tube out of our way. That was easy enough. Okay, hey, here we have actually made it to where we can see the throttle body now. This is actually the piece we're replacing. Looks like we have eight millimeter, four eight millimeter uh, bolts that hold it in place. One, two, three, and there's one down here you can't see. Uh, we have two hoses going here. These are coolant hoses. We're probably gonna pinch them off with some needle nose vice grips where we don't lose all our coolant and we'll disconnect them. We'll lay a rag or something down here to catch a little bit of the coolant. And right over here, we have a connector. I'm pointing to it with my middle finger right there. I'm gonna reach over here and squeeze the tab and go ahead and disconnect that. Okay, and we'll lay that connector out of the way. So now let me get the uh, eight millimeter and we'll go ahead and start unbolting this. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull these clamps back on these two coolant hoses here. And it uh, looks like I might need another pair of pliers to do that with. Let's see if I can get it with these little needle nose vice grips here. And uh, we're just gonna go push the clamps back here for just a moment. And then we're gonna try to squeeze off these lines so we don't lose a whole lot of coolant. We'll actually just squeeze them off with um, some vice grips. Okay, we got these clamps pushed back. We went ahead and twisted each one of them and actually kind of got them broke loose. Uh, one of them seemed to have a little pressure on it, so I went ahead and pulled the radiator cap off just to relieve the pressure on the cooling system. So we're gonna reach over here with a pair of needle nose vice grips and pinch off this one coolant hose here so we don't lose. I mean, don't, don't try to cut it in half. Just try to squeeze it shut so you'll lose the minimum amount of coolant right there. You won't have it running all over your uh, engine bay. Same thing here. We're just gonna adjust it up about like that right there. Clap it on here. Just kind of squeeze this line. Let's go a little bit tighter than that. Just a hair tighter. And uh, there we go. Now we should be able to pull these lines off and we won't lose an enormous amount of coolant when we do that. So we just kind of lay them out of the way for right now. And then we'll get busy removing these four bolts. Okay, with our eight millimeter socket here, we're just gonna go ahead and start Rinsing off uh, these bolts here right quick, and then we'll show you how to pull it off of here when we get there. Okay, I'm spinning the last one out by hand here, folks, just with the socket on the bolt here. I'm going to pull the bolt out. I'll just lay them all right up here now. And uh, then we'll pull this off here together and see what she looks like. I'm almost there. Oh, I thought I had that one backed out further, but I guess it didn't. Here we go. This one's out. And then this one here, I know I gotta back it out a little further. <coughs> All right, so we should be able to pull this right on out of here. And there we go, guys. As you can see, just the four bolts and the two, two coolant hoses and the connector. And we should have a gasket that actually, let's go right down here and grab the flashlight. That's a gasket that come with the uh, unit. Yeah, it's an O-ring gasket that actually fits down in this intake. So we'll wipe this surface off here real good with a rag and some brake clean. And then we'll pull this little O-ring out. We'll show you when we do that. Actually, we can do it right now. You can grab it right here. It's got like a little tip that sits up, sits up there. You can grab this and pull this O-ring right out. So we'll wipe all that up and we'll put our new gasket in place and get the new one on here.
Okay, now we have our new gasket in hand. We're gonna go ahead and just shove it in here and get it in place. And uh, we got the little, the little tip that sticks out there. We put it right back in the slot that it was in before. And we're just gonna push it in. And this one sticks out a little further because it needs to be compressed. So this should actually create a better seal than reusing the old one. All right, so with that in place, we're about ready to go ahead and install our new throttle body. I have it right here. As you can see, it's nice and clean, nice and shiny. It's a brand new unit, Hitachi brand is the brand on it. We got this through um, uh, Advanced Auto Parts. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this down here in place and get a couple bolts started. We're gonna start a couple here by hand. We'll get all four of them actually started by hand before we tighten up any of them. <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll snug them down in a crisscross pattern until we get it fully seated. All right, guys, I'm just using the socket by hand, <clears throat> spinning them down there. And, uh, and then we'll actually start tightening them up here with the ratchet in just a moment. Okay, we're gonna tighten up with the ratchet, like I said, going in a crisscross pattern. And we'll go over here, catch this one. down here, same thing, okay, let's just see how this feels now, I think we about got it like we need it, oh yeah, that feels good, check this last one here, oh yeah, so there you go friends, it don't have to be crazy tight, just a little snug. Okay friends, we're going to go ahead and uh, plug in our connector, so we got that plugged in, we're gonna go ahead and hook up these two coolant lines right here. We're gonna slide them back in place. And then we'll remove our two pair of vice grips that we had on here. Slide that one out of the way. Slide that one out of the way. And then we should be able to um, slide these clamps back into place. And then we'll actually be pretty much done with this part of it out here and we'll move on to the relearn procedure here shortly. I think I need to use the, hang on just a second. All right. I'd use our needle nose vice grips on this one. So we got it clamped in there and guys, that's looking pretty good right there. Hoses are reinstalled, connectors on, throttle bodies bolted down. All we have to do now is put this uh, air tube here back in position. Notice I didn't even disconnect it. I just kind of swung it around. It's just a uh, line going to the uh, valve cover for the PCV system. So we're just gonna slide this right back into place and tighten these two clamps down and we'll be about done and ready for the relearn procedure. Now, guys, we're just going to go and tighten down our two hose clamps here. And then we'll be ready to put on our engine cover. Okay, folks, with the uh, engine cover in place, we've got the bolt started. We're going to go ahead and just snug it down. And one thing I want to mention, uh, if you do lose some coolant with taking off those coolant lines, make sure you top off your radiator and top off your coolant overflow jug at this time, okay? So we are going to actually do that here in a little bit. I went ahead and stuck the cap back on. I'm gonna go and pull it back off just so it's a reminder. We're gonna top this off here in just a little bit. But our antifreeze is actually in the trunk. And remember, we got the battery cut off right now. So I'm just rambling on, all in all. Okay, guys, we went ahead and uh, hooked up our battery, okay, because we're getting ready to do the relearn here in just a minute. But we got the antifreeze ooh, out of the trunk. Be careful not to spill it like I'm doing. But we're just going to go and top off this radiator here a little bit. 
Guys, we're also going to top off our coolant overflow jug at this time. We'll go ahead and make it sure it's up to the max line. Or if you can't see the max line on a car, guys, as long as you get your jug about halfway, you should be good enough. Okay, friends, hey, we're inside the car here. We're going to do a relearn procedure, and it comes with the um, unit itself in the paperwork, okay? So here's how we're going to do it. It's telling us to uh, idle, relearn procedure, accelerator, pedal, released position, learning procedure. Ex number one, accelerator pedal must be fully released, which it is. I do not have my foot on it at this time. Number two, perform the following two procedures. A, turn ignition system on, do not start the engine, and wait at least two seconds. B, turn the ignition off and wait at least 10 seconds, okay? And then we are going to repeat this one additional time. So let's cut it on. I think we need to go one more time with it to cut everything on. Okay, so 1,001, 1,002, bam, cut it off. 1,001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, one to grow on. All right, so we're off. So we're going to perform this one more time again. So let's go ahead and cut it on. Hit it twice. 1,001. 1002 and we're going to cut this off okay we're not going to count because we know it's going to take longer than 10 seconds so we've done that part of the procedure now we have the throttle closed relearn procedure with the accelerator pedal released turn the ignition on okay turn the ignition off and listen for the throttle valve to move within the next 10 seconds, okay? I don't know if I can hear it from inside the car here. Let's just do this one time here with pedal release. Basically, this is what we just got through doing. Actually, I did hear something. Turn ignition off and listen for the throttle valve to move within the next 10 seconds. Okay, I did not hear anything, probably because I'm inside the car here. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the throttle valve open relearn procedure, okay? So this is evidently going to be with me pressing the pedal down. Number one, with the accelerator pedal released, turn the ignition system on, do not start the engine, and wait three seconds, okay? All right, number two, Completely depress and release the accelerator pedal five times within five seconds, okay? And then wait seven seconds and depress the accelerator pedal for approximately 20 seconds until the fault indicator changes from flashing to continuously lit. Once the false indicator light begins flashing again, after approximately 10 seconds, immediately release the accelerator pedal. Well, this is getting confusing, guys. Start the engine and let it idle for 20 seconds. Rev the engine. Okay, let's start over here. Let's take this one step at a time, okay? Okay, let's try this, guys. Uh, with the accelerator pedal release, turn the ignition system on. Do not start engine and wait three seconds, okay? Let's cut it on, okay. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Now completely depress and release the accelerator pedal five times within five seconds, okay? That's gonna be pretty fast, so let's do that. One, two, three, four, five. Wait seven seconds and depress the accelerator for approximately 20 seconds until the fault indicator. So we probably already talked for five, six, seven, maybe eight seconds. Let's go, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Well, until the fault indicator changes from flashing to continuously lit. I do not even see a fault indicator anywhere on this car. All right, we're going to go ahead and lease, release this uh, pedal now. Oh, okay, I do see it. Okay, it did stop when I released it. That must have been the fault indicator right up there. See right up in here? Oh, that's a tire system module. That's what that is. I have no idea. Okay, guys, I'm not quite sure if we've done this correctly because I never did see a fault indicator, but we are going to go ahead and crank this car. We're going to go on to the next step. We're going to crank it and let it idle for 20 seconds, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Put on the brake, cranking the car. It seems to be idling at a normal uh, idle speed, so that's a good sign. I know sometimes I've done these before at work when I had to use the scan tool and they were like acting all crazy. We'll let it run for approximately 20 seconds, which I have not been counting, but we probably were 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now it's telling me to rev the engine two or three times to make sure that engine returns to normal idle, okay? So we're gonna just rev it. There's one. There's two. There's three. And it looks like it's actually going back to a normal idle speed there, okay. If engine does not return to normal idle speeds, repeat the throttle valve open relearn procedure or consult a professional technician for the most current relearn position. Okay. Which I am a professional, but I do not have our fancy scan tool that we have at work here at home today. Otherwise, I would have done it with that. So, guys, let's see, let's see if we can get me in the picture here. Uh, thank you for watching our little video today. Hopefully you found this helpful. I'm gonna hold this. I'm gonna let her just kind of film this little, what's written here. And you can read that for yourself. Um, I'm gonna let her zoom in on that. Go ahead and zoom in on that. Just where they can get from like here to here. So if they wanna read that, they'll have the, they can pause their video and actually read that if they need to. Guys, thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will see you next time take care hey friends i meant to add something to this video and um so i'm just gonna add it here at the end the reason that we uh replaced this throttle body on this car today uh the symptom was customer was having a problem when accelerating from a dead stop the car would just lose power wouldn't do anything finally it would take off and start going okay so what I did is uh, hooked a scan tool up to the car and put it on uh, data as I drove it to duplicate this problem. And I found that on a normal takeoff procedure, it went, when the throttle position sensor got to 12%, it would hang up there. It had a glitch and it was hanging up there. And even when you went past that to open it further up to, you know, 70, 80%, it was still staying hung up at 12% if you took off real slowly or at a normal rate. So that's how we determined that this throttle body position sensor was bad, okay? And on this unit here, when you purchase that, you end up purchasing a whole throttle body. So guys, just wanted to let you know that right quick. And uh, hopefully if you have that same problem, this will take care of your problem as well. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Take care.